Hi, everyone. I'm Hema. Um, my mentee is Amelia, who's a 10th grader from Pinewood. Um, she was pretty sure she's going to get into journalism before she started. Um, and then lately, she, computer science has got her interest. Um, she has a lot of pets. She loves animals. She only recently got her driving license, and she takes every chance she can get to drive around. Um, the really remarkable thing about um, what she did over the past three months is she worked on a machine learning project, and she's like one of the first few uh, mentees at Magic to be doing that. Um, I can't even imagine myself, uh, my 16-year-old self, thinking about anything like machine learning. Uh, and we have like really complex research going on here. So I'm, I'm not going to steal her thunder. I'm going to let her talk about her project. Um, so yeah. Amelia. Hello, everyone. My name is Amelia Rowe, and I was a 10th grader attending Pinewood School. Um, so I was lucky enough to get Hema as my mentor, and she is a hardware engineer currently working at Google. She earned her master's degree in electrical and computer engineering from Purdue University. And outside of her busy work schedule and mentoring myself, she likes to visit national parks, read, and train in classical Indian dance. And this is us today by the gingerbread. <laughs> okay, so like Hima already said, I did a machine learning project. And in our brainstorming session, I would have never thought that I would nor could actually be able to do a machine learning project. And I think that's one of the great things about this program is that with a little encouragement and some knowledge, you can really do anything you set your mind to. So once I decided that I wanted to do a machine learning project, we thought the best way to start was to familiarize ourselves with this new terminology. Because trust me, there's a lot of new and confusing terminology to machine learning. So that's why I wanted to give you each a handout like this. and. I wrote all these definitions myself because in our research phase, there was a lot of different methods that people could define things. So I just did this in the simplest form. And I'll be, in order to actually understand my project, I think it's good that you each get a foundation of machine learning as well. So I'll go over a few of these just to give you some help understanding. So machine learning is basically building algorithms that allow computers to learn to perform tasks based on data. So it's very similar to how humans learn. Let's say you wanted to go to the beach, but it was raining and it was below 50 degrees. You probably would not go to the beach. But if it was sunny and it was above 80 degrees, you would go to the beach. So based on the inputs of weather and temperature, you can decide beach or no beach, which is essentially how machine learning works. And then data mining was something that I used in my project. It's basically where the machine itself discovers patterns and makes predictions from the data that you give it. And image processing and text analysis are just other ways that machines can learn. And then there's two kinds of learning that machines can do. It's supervised and unsupervised. So supervised learning is a machine learning algorithm that has to transfer a particular input into a desired output. And unsupervised learning is where a machine learning algorithm is only given inputs. So for an example, if you're trying to teach a machine how to play chess, if you want to use supervised learning, the input you'd give it is just a chess board and the pieces are set. And the output would be you winning and how the board looks then. So if you gave it a bunch of pictures of how the board looks before and after winning, it could essentially, if you give it a board, it could solve it and get to a desired output based on the data you gave it. And if it was unsupervised learning, you would only give it boards as inputs. You wouldn't give it the winning solution. And then after seeing all those input boards, it would decide how to solve. Yes. Um, and then in my project, I used supervised learning. And specifically, I used classification, which are when outputs belong to a finite, finite set. So for example, true or false, or positive or negative. So if my input was, if it was a sunny day and it was above 80 degrees, I could say true or yes speech. And if it was, like I said, if it was cold and rainy, it would say false. And that's classification. And then another thing that I used in my project is called clustering, which is where the machine groups training data based on similar outputs. So we can use that beach example again. 
Um, what clustering might look like is you have one cluster here that says beach and then no beach. And then lastly, what I'll go over is an API. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard of this already, but I like to think of APIs as a waiter at a restaurant. So let's say you were to order something like I want a salad. The waiter would go back and tell the chef make a salad and then you would bring back your food. So it's sort of how you interact between two different interfaces, how you say salad and then you actually get it back. So that's what I'm gonna start off with. I hope you learned something. And so now, when I had to decide what, after learning the basics, I had to decide what I wanted to do my project on. And so I decided that I wanted a classifier model based on audio features that, would, that was going to be programmed in Python, which I was already pretty familiar with. So basically, if you wanted to throw a really cool dance party and you wanted all the songs to be really danceable, I wanted my model, you'd be able to give it a song and it would tell you danceable or not danceable based on training data. So once the model, a model is another name for a machine learning algorithm, I'll say model a lot. So once the model gets a brand new song or a query as they call it in machine learning, um, it would determine danceable or not danceable. So these are just a few of the components that made up my project. So I hope you all know what Spotify is. Yeah, okay, it's a music streaming app. So. Um, that is not a typo, that actually says Spotify. So I had to use the Spotify Python library to pull in audio features from Spotify songs to train the model. So you couldn't just give my model a song, it needed the audio features that came with it. And what my mentor and I decided on was to use the danceability score to decide whether it was danceable or not danceable. And then I also had to become a Spotify developer in order to use the web API, which like I said, made it able for my program to interact with the Spotify Python library. And so we started out small. We used about 10 songs and their danceability scores to begin with to train my model. And once we got that working, we decided to upgrade and download the million song data set, which is a public data set that gives you songs and it has a lot of audio features that accompany it. Um, so a million songs was a little much to download for my computer, so we decided to settle with the subset which was about 10,000 songs. And once we downloaded it and we thought we got it working, we went to print out all the danceability scores to see if it was accurate. And lo and behold, we got back all zeros. So apparently, the people working at the Million Song dataset did not input the danceability score, but catered that they did. So we had to change direction, and we decided to use tempo instead of danceability, hoping that a high tempo song would still be danceable. So that was just a little bump in the road. And then we used the program Scikit-Learn, which basically provided the machine learning algorithms that our training data could work on. And we also used many other modules like Conda, NumPy, and HDF5 to write the machine learning code in Python to train the model and then label the query. And my mentor and I also ran into a problem where if we wanted one thing to work, like if we wanted Conda to work, you needed to download five or six other modules just to get that working. So that was also fun troubleshooting. And so my experience with my mentor has been absolutely amazing and inspiring, and I definitely learned a lot, and definitely to persevere when things didn't exactly work out. Um, okay, so this is basically, in simplest form, what my demo does. So you can give it a song from Spotify, and then my model in the code will use the Spotify library to pull in its audio features. And then it uses the 10,000 songs as training data, their own tempo scores, and their danceability labels, either danceable or not danceable, as training data, in order to classify whether the new song or query is danceable or not danceable. So my mentor and I ended up using two different models. We used decision tree and KNN, which are also on your sheet. So decision trees are, we've all seen those in magazines where you follow the thing, like if this, then go here. That's sort of what machine learning this model does. So it's a classification algorithm in which the leaves, or the down bars, represent labels, and the branches represent features. So I also wanted to put in a picture of, this is the subset of the million song data set. 
So I don't know if you can see it, but this is a lot of data that my model had to go through. And A and B, these each include about 20 different songs. And then the first ones include about 5,000. So I just wanted to put that in there. Um, so I left out a lot of the behind the scenes work of my code and a lot of the more complicated stuff to just show you what sort of happens on the front. So sklearn is scikit-learn, where we imported tree, or the decision tree machine learning algorithm. And this is sort of where the decision tree kicks in. If T stands for tempo. So if tempo is greater than 90, which was the tempo score, you're going to append a 1. If it's lower than 90, you're going to append a 2. So how decision tree works, it, so do you see where clf.fit xy? So x is the song label itself, and y is either going to be a 1 or 2 based on its dan tempo score. So 1 is danceable, 2 is not danceable. And then I ask, what song would you like to test? So you copy and paste a track link from Spotify. And then clf.fit is sort of the call to the machine learning algorithm. And then it prints, if that query, if it determined if it's a one, it'll print danceable. If it thinks it's a two, it'll print not danceable. So that's decision tree. And then the second and last one we did was called KNN, which stands for K nearest neighbors which is also on the sheet. And I sort of define this as a definition of peer pressure. It's basically if my neighbors are doing it or if everyone around me is doing it, then I'm going to do it. So the official definition, it's a clustering algorithm used to classify based on the majority of your neighbors. And K stands for a constant. So you can set the number of neighbors. I set it to five in my program. And you can see that. So let's say the query that you gave it was this point right here, that blue point, if you can see. So if I set number of neighbors to five, it's going to look at the five closest, closest points to it and see if the majority is blue, then the machine will define it as blue. If it was over here, it would look to the closest and define it as red. So um, again, from scikit-learn, we import the neighbors algorithm. And then we set number of neighbors to five. And again, if the tempo was grady, greater than 90, it would append a 1. If it was less than 90, it would append a 2. It asks for the song that you would like to test, and then it fits it by calling the KNN algorithm. And then it prints whether it's danceable or not danceable based on the majority of the neighbors. And this is a three class. I generated this from the scikit-learn website. This is a three class classification. Mine's two class. It's danceable or not danceable. So you could cover up the green and then red and blue would represent danceable or not danceable. And whatever the query went, it would look to see whether its neighbors were more danceable or not. So I would first like to thank my mentor, because I learned so much for you, and I was so lucky to get you as a mentor, and also Magic for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And thank you for listening. <laughs>